Every time this machine is in one of my videos, even if it's way off in the background, I always get a flood of questions asking what it is, and did I make it myself, or where did I get it, and what do I think of it, and what CNC should they buy, and so on. So I want to make a dedicated video about this machine. This machine was originally a CNC Shark Pro Plus. Not the Pro Plus HD, just a Pro Plus. The problem with this machine was these completely unsupported rails. They're 20 millimeter rails spanning 32 inches, completely unsupported. So, like, that, that doesn't work, guys. Even though this thing looks really big and strong, it's weaker than an X-Carve. And to make matters worse, it suffered from the same unsupported 20 millimeter rails for the entire gantry to run on. So you've got the weight of this whole gantry on an unsupported rail. That doesn't work. So I don't think that leaves a whole lot of question as to why I rebuilt the machine, but I wanted to tell the story of how I rebuilt it. Back when I did this, I took a bunch of blurry pictures of it on my iPhone 4, and that's all the documentation I have. So I'm going to try to piece that together with some video of the finished machine, and try to tell as good a story as I can. This is not going to be my normal quality. Newcomers, don't judge me by this video. I hope you understand. The first thing I did was to order some 20 millimeter fully supported rails as a set, and these came with the bearings. I then stripped the CNC Shark down to the bare plastic frame. Since my new rails were going to be about 9 inches longer than the originals, I had to notch out the corner of the plastic frame to make room for those. I think it's important for any CNC to have the rails mounted to the table, so that if the table sags, the gantry will follow that sag. If the rail is not mounted to the table, then the table could sag and the gantry not, which means you're going to be getting an inconsistent cut depth. So I used some 80-20 T-Track bolts and nuts to mount a 2x2 two two aluminum angle to the bottom of the table. That way I could just mount my rails directly to that. And then I bolted both of those back down to the frame, just how they were on the original CNC Shark. So that's all I did to the base. I just replaced the rails with fully supported ones. Now I want to talk about the gantry, because that is 100% rebuilt. There are no original parts left on it, except for the motors and screws. So I'll get started by talking about the parts down here that hold the bearings. This is another place where the old machine really suffered from a serious design flaw. The two bearings on here were mounted super close together, which means the entire gantry could rack side to side and also tilt front to back, so it wasn't really rigid. I really didn't want to cheap out on that again, so I made this a 13 inch stance. The bearings are 13 inches apart, so there is no racking in any direction with this. That is completely rigid. And that also explains why on the ends here, I left this rail sticking out a little bit farther. That's because this is so long that it takes quite a bit of room to get its full travel. Since the Y-axis motor is mounted right there, with a drive screw going under the table, there has to be something going through under the table to connect to that drive screw. Right here you can see the end of it. It's a piece of 1 by 2 inch box tube that runs all the way through. And right there in the center you can see that is the Delrin nut that the screw runs in, and it's mounted in a piece of one and a half by two inch aluminum angle. For clarification, here's a picture looking down from on top before I put on the table. I need to show you the next part down here. It's very difficult to see, and I don't have a pre-assembly picture of it, but it's a very important part. The plate I'm trying to show you is right here. My fingernail is touching it, that little thin plate. So that is like the top of a T. Now, back, back in there, you can see the other end of the plate. That is like the bottom of a T. And right up there where all that sawdust is, that's where it's bolted on. So that T-shaped piece of stainless is keeping this piece up here square to this piece that runs under the table. I hope that made sense, because it is the only thing that is keeping the X-axis square to the y-axis. All right, now let's look at the end plates. Honestly, this is the biggest mistake I made on this machine. I have absolutely no idea what I was thinking. I'm still licking my wounds. This is a half inch thick aluminum plate, five and a half inches wide, 17 inches tall. Like I could have just gone with a piece of aluminum flat bar and just bolted it on here. And that would have cost me probably about $30 for both ends. But instead I had a guy with a water jet cut these out of half inch plate. 
for about $300. By the way, though, I also had him cut out the router clamps, which was great. I'm, I'm really glad I did that. Oh well, it's done. I guess I'll just move on and show you the back of the gantry. So the gantry is just a couple pieces of two by two by eighth aluminum angle. The rails are bolted onto them. That top one gives this drag chain a really nice place to write. The part that I've always been wanting to add that's been missing is a piece of three by one and a half aluminum box tube in here. I wanna just bolt that in between those and that will make that gantry way more rigid. Speaking of gantry rigidity, that is by far the number one thing to be concerned about if you're ever building a CNC machine. And I've noticed the same issue with all three of my machines. The biggest weakness in CNC gantries seems to be twist. The gantry wants to twist and this one is not really any different. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it still has a little bit of twist. It's way stronger than the old gantry and many times stronger than an X-curve, but that's why I need to add that piece of box tube in the back. That will really reduce that twist. So now I'm gonna show you how this whole part is made. There's a lot going on here. I just counted it up and there's 116 drilled holes and 72 bolts in just the part that is moving right now. The x-axis bearings, these right here, are bolted directly onto the z-axis rails. Those bolts go through the z-axis rail support and into these bearings. But between those two, there's a piece of two inch angle right there. And if you look at where that comes out on this side, that right there is the bearing. This is that piece of two inch angle. And you can see this leg of the angle has been trimmed down to only three inches long. And the purpose of that whole assembly there is just to hold this Delrin nut. So that's the x-axis drive. And here at the top, you can see there's a piece of three by three by quarter inch angle. And that's what's holding up this motor. The piece is also helping to keep these rails spaced correctly. Now, the Z-axis assembly is quite simple by comparison. To start with, you'll see there's two pieces of angle, here and here, and they're opposing each other. So, here's one leg of the angle, here's the other leg, sort of wrapping around the linear bearings. And then right here between them, that is a piece of 3 8 flat bar for this Delrin nut. Other than that, it just has these two router clamps, which, as I mentioned earlier, are water cut out of half inch aluminum. And actually the router itself, once it's clamped in here, adds a lot of strength to the entire Z-axis assembly. So that's pretty much it for this machine. When you break it down piece by piece, it's actually pretty simple. So I wanna talk about specs of this machine, and then I'm gonna show you how I made this table and a kind of unique clamping system. The cutting area of this machine is 26 by 26, and it has about six inches of Z-axis travel, but I normally can't use that. I can only use about three inches because of this table and because of bit length. The motors are 269 ounce inch NEMA 23, and that coupled with the fairly aggressive one half inch per revolution thread pitch makes for, in my opinion, the perfect drive mechanism. It moves fast enough. That right there would be the maximum speed. But it's a high enough mechanical advantage that it still has a lot of power, so... <laughs> there is no way I can stop this machine. What you could consider a downside about that is if you run into anything when the bit is stopped, it will break the bit. The Z-axis has a slightly less aggressive one half inch Acme rod. So that's the maximum speed on that one. For the router, I'm using a Bosch 1617 EVS. It's a super good router for this application with RPM range from 8,000 up to 25,000 RPM. It also has the nice magnesium round body, which is good for putting in a router clamp like this. I'm recommending this router if you're gonna put it in a CNC machine or a router table. However, I wanna point out that I am not recommending this thing as a handheld router because it sucks. But in a router table or CNC, it's great. For the control box, I'm using the original that came with the CNC Shark. I really don't know what's inside this thing or what kind of specs it has or anything. Nextwaveautomation.com knows everything about it. I do 
plus some. I run the machine on a Dell Latitude D630, and my CNC software is VCarve Pro, which came with my original machine. I'm actually really glad that it came with the machine, because otherwise I would have never bought it. It's like a $700 program. And to actually run the CNC, I use the CNC Sharp control panel that came with the machine. It doesn't have any extra features, but it's good and stable, and it's a nice, clean user interface, which I appreciate. And to store the computer when it's not in use, folds nice and flat. As promised, I'm going to show you the table, which is a piece of three quarter inch MDF and a piece of half inch MDF glued on top of that. But before I glue those together, I cut dados into this piece. So you can see how those are dados just cut with the table saw before this was put on. Then I glued this on and then used a dado blade and the table saw to cut these slots out. So that created this part of the T-Track. Very simple T-Track table just made entirely on the table saw. That does work with these kind of clamps. But that's not what I made it for. I made it for these kind. This is a very, very simple idea. It's just a piece of quarter inch plywood. This edge has been thinned down slightly and two slots. They're slots so that I can skew it a little bit. And then I use toilet hold down bolts. You can get these at the hardware store and they have a nice T-track head. This goes right on top of them. And then if this is the piece of wood that I want to hold down, I just cut a groove in both edges. The hold down clamps fit into that groove. And then I just use my drill, have a torque setting on it. And that's it. That's clamped securely. I really believe that this is the simplest and best CNC clamping system there is. It holds the most securely of anything I've ever used. If this piece tries to move, it's gonna have to move the whole clamp with it. Whereas one of these, the piece can actually slip under the clamp. It allows you to machine an entire surface without hitting any clamps, and you can cut around the edge without hitting anything. You might be asking why I use an MDF table and cover up this very nice aluminum T-Track table. The simple reason is that I can machine this off. The aluminum one may not be totally flat to the CNC. With this one, I can actually use the CNC to cut it flat. Even if the CNC has a sag in it or something, I cut the table to follow that sag, so I will get a consistent cut depth with this. So I have been asked many times, Jer, what CNC should I buy? I honestly cannot recommend any CNC because at this point, they all have a design flaw of some kind and they're all way overpriced. So if you want a CNC and you're willing to work for it, build one. You can build a machine that's better than this for about $800. I have about $800 in rebuilding this one. But as I said, I wasted about 270 on these end plates. For that 270, I could buy all the motors and screws and also an Arduino and G-Shield and power supply to work as the control box. By the way, my rebuild cost did include this Bosch router. 800 bucks, you can build you a good CNC. I mean, you're gonna be looking at a comparable price of about 5,000 for that quality of CNC if you wanna buy one. Is it worth $4,200 to you to save the work of making it? Now you're probably saying I should build a CNC if I think I can do it for $800. I'm not going to make any promises, but I'm thinking about it. Um, sorry about the low quality in this video. I'll be back next Sunday with a better quality video, a normal quality. Thanks a lot for watching.